Hi and welcome back to a new video. On my table I have a ton of MSI components and that's because I'm building a PC for MSI. Which is basically a paid video but not the video you're watching right now because I'm just going to follow the process of making the video actually. Because sometimes some manufacturers are approaching me, especially doing a lot of stuff with Corsair Germany for the Corsair uh, Germany YouTube channel. So we are producing videos they can upload on their channel, which could be a paid video for example. Or this is some kind of MSI advertising campaign. So they send over all those components like 11900K, C590 board, uh, 3080 and all those kind of components. And then I'm going to make a video which is like 90 seconds long and they're using this for some kind of advertising campaign. Those are also videos I'm producing once in a while. And by the way, if you're sometimes unsure what kind of content you're watching right now, if this is like a paid video or if I'm using samples or whatever, I'm always listing everything at the bottom of my video description. So you can always check that out. If I'm getting paid for, for example, adding a pre-roll advertisement spot in the video, then you will see this as the paid content in my video with a list, for example, I don't know, Hetzner advertising spot or whatever. And for this video, you will probably see all the samples that I'm using for shooting the video, just to be fully transparent. All right, so I'm going to build um, the PC. Also testing some, that's mainly the reason why I'm also shooting this video. Because this also gives me the opportunity to often test hardware I usually otherwise might not be able to get my hands on. For example, the MSI SSD never had the opportunity to test it so far, so also great information for me. Base for today's system is the MSI C590 Ace. We had this board in the gold edition already on my channel, so we featured it entirely already, also did VRM temperature check and everything. The board itself is exactly identical. Like there's no difference, it's just the design because this one is black, the other one is gold, the other one has like gold plating here and everything. But technically it's exactly the same board. So I'm not going to go over the board in more details right now. 11900K also, I mean this is by nowadays standard almost old. And the memory kit we're using is a G-Skill Trident C RGB kit, 3200 C16. Personally, if I would like recommend this or buy then I would probably go for 3600 C16 which should be better performance wise but typically if you get some of these uh, kits then if you increase voltage usually it's not a big issue to run 3600 and also the 3080 Trio X already had this card once for like a single day and especially just talking about noise level visuals it's a great card it's pretty quiet which I like about it pretty sleek nothing too fancy enough surface area for good temperatures. Even though it's just a small part, this is probably the part except for the case I'm most interested in testing wise. Spatium, I'm not sure, sounds like one of the Roman weapons from the Roman Empire. This is pretty cool. The fact that they're delivering all the parts individually, so you have the SSD itself. Sometimes, especially with mainboards like this, you always have those M.2 shields you might want to keep for visual reasons because it just fits the design. In that case, just use the M.2 drive itself, no heatsink. But then this maybe offers better performance thermally. So if you want to, you could just mount this, which I think is a very good solution. It's also probably better than like Corsair MP600 where everything comes assembled and often you have to take it apart to use it with like included heatsinks or whatever. And this is probably the most elegant solution. I think I will go with the heatsink though. More surface area should mean better temperatures and considering that it's gold just fits perfectly in the design I think. Got the SSD mounted, now time to pick up the case and check that out. The case is the MSI Velox Velox, not sure, 100p airflow. Airflow is something I absolutely appreciate. So it's not a fully open front but it's like a mesh front should be big enough for decent ventilation inside the case. We have full fans sitting underneath the front, which should also help for ventilation. Cannot really film from that side, but we will do that afterwards. But we have fans inside. We also have a fan for exhaust in the back, which is also great. Then we have tempered glass side panel, also great. One more thing I also find great is the vertical GPU bracket that's also included directly in the case. You don't have to buy it in addition. The only thing you have to buy is your riser cable, which, yeah, I mean, it could be included, but then 
might also depend on what kind of hardware configuration you're using. If you're using PCI Express 3.0, 4.0, maybe 5.0 in the future. So that's, I guess, okay. The top cover part can easily be removed because it's just held by magnets and then you have dust filters underneath if you want to clean it or whatever. Also, if you want to mount your AIO or whatever, then just remove the top part. On top, we also have the IO area, which in the end is like personal preference. The position is not the position I would personally prefer. I would prefer something in the front, I think. But you have everything you would need, like basic wise, power reset, audio jacks, type A, type C, LED switch, yeah, cycle through your RGB types, whatever. Not so great is the price. At least, I mean, I didn't even build a system in there so far, but just when I took it out of the box, it's very light, which straight indicates that they're using very thin materials, very thin, like steel frame, which you could also see at a point where I removed the top cover, like the top, I don't know, dust filter frame, whatever, it bends very easily, which is not really a problem. If you build your PC and it's sitting on your desk, you don't have any kind of mechanical stress to the case, so that's okay. But if I consider the price of like 180 euro, it's like $200, I think it's uh, yeah, very expensive for what it feels like. I still have to test if it's good to build in, like if there's something completely wrong, like I don't know, colliding components, whatever. I think I don't have to expect this, but just subjectively speaking, this feels like a 90 euro case and not like a 180 euro case. But let's build in it and see how it turns out. Making some pretty decent progress on the PC itself. Mainboard bundle, except for the memory is sitting inside. PSU is already mounted. Most of the cable management is also already done. One thing I have to complain about though is the vertical GPU mount. Accessing the screws from the right, like the normal status is okay, but with the vertical GPU mount, this screw is okay, but those two cannot really be accessed from the top because, because as you can see, screwdriver is not really going to fit. So I had to use the good old everything fixing tool. Everything will be cooled by this Core Liquid 240R, just very basic 240 AIO. Pump sitting inside our radiator, bypassing some patterns. Otherwise, very basic RGB fans, RGB, I was close to say pump header, but no pump inside. Anyway, note to myself, when I'm doing vertical GPU mount, always do all the cable management first, because I was missing the cabling of the back fan. PWM header to some sysfan header on the board. So I had to route it uh, all the way down to the main board and just like put it underneath the VGA. All right, last steps and then we should be good to go. The first impression is really good. I also have to admit now that the case has those RGB strips and they are alive, it looks much better, like much better quality than what you get on the first impression. You have this light strip in here front, top in the front. I somehow also like the green theme in this PC, not sure why. So I have to set the memory and VGA and everything, but just installing Windows right now, but everything so far worked out as planned.
I think the result turns out quite nicely. With the red color, I think uh, it just looks very nice. The first thing I was uh, thinking of when I was finished with the build is the airflow of the SSD. Because it's sitting so like closely squeezed behind the GPU, I was a bit worried if the temperatures will be all right. So let's check that first. The CPU itself was running stock, which was also working fine. Memory itself, I kind of overestimated those memory sticks which is also interesting because I had the same type of memory sticks before and they were easily passing 3600 C16. Those cannot even do like 3700 C16, only if I put it to like C18 and very loose subs. So yeah, I guess because it's a very low bin, it's just pure luck if your sticks will be able to run maybe a little bit higher or not. Those were not capable of running significantly higher, so I went back down to 3200 C16. I think that was better than 3400 C18. Cinemage R20 just below 600 points, also as expected. And looking at the SSD temperature and performance, I performed five times the five times sequential read and write tests, which equals a total of 25 tests, which is much more than what you would typically have inside any kind of gaming scenario or typical workload applications, daily applications. And yeah, so peak read was just below the 7000 megabyte per second, which were also advertised, so that's in line. Read 6800 megabyte in per second, that's also in line. And very good is the temperature of the drive, which peaked out at 61 degrees Celsius, and it's now already back to 52 after, I don't know, four or five minutes. So the ventilation inside the case is definitely working and cooling looks very good. The assembly process itself worked out good. There's nothing I would complain about, just building inside the case, everything was fine. The case still just doesn't feel or doesn't reflect the price, in my opinion. The fans in the front are good, they're very quiet. I'm using them semi-passive right now, hooked up to the mainboard, so that's also working very well. The mainboard itself, as I pointed out before, we already tested the board in a separate review. The board has very solid components, the VRM temperature is typically very low, so that's nothing I would complain about. But there is something regarding the AIO. Even though the fans are subjectively quiet, even if I stop them now, it doesn't really change like the subjective noise level of the system. But if they're running, you can hear some kind of like scratching noise. It sounds like it's coming from the bearing of the fans. Not sure what kind of bearing they're using inside the fan, but that's something you can hear and it's not a nice tone. If you check how the fans are sitting on the radiator, it's because of the fan design itself. It's like an X shape. There is, yeah, a pretty huge gap between the fan frame and the radiator. I'm just using this piece of paper. If I move this closer to the fan, you can see it's getting sucked into the fan. Now I'm just waiting for Cinebench R20 to process, which results in higher heat load and higher heat output of the CPU. And if we move now our piece of paper closer to the place up there, you can see There is a lot of air coming through. That's an easy way of showing this, but if I just put my finger on there, I can feel that it's, it is a lot of air. That is one aspect I would definitely complain about. I'm not sure if MSI is selling those fans separate to the AIO, but if it was like strictly made exclusive for the AIO, they should definitely pay attention to the fact that the fan should seal off the AIO completely on the radiator. Typically, we're trying to use fans with high static pressure to push as much air through the radiator as possible because the radiator has a ton of surface area, it has a lot of resistance for the fan and you need some pressure to push the air through. And if there are holes on the side, you cannot really build up pressure. That could maybe be solved by adding some those could maybe be solved by adding those rubber fan decoupling things. Not sure I didn't test it, but I mean it's quite logic that if there is a lot of air coming out that this is not going to help. So the AIO is something they could definitely improve for the future and the case. I'm not sure if that's the real retail price here, but if this is 180 euro, it would definitely be too much for my taste for the kind of quality and like subjective feel you're getting. The performance, airflow, everything is fine, but I think um, it's just not cheap. All right, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.